Good morning, everybody. How we doing? Good. Well, I guess you guys waited out the snowstorm this morning. The surprise snowstorm. We're glad that you're here. Thanks for coming. Great to, uh, to, to have you and to be able to worship with you. And um, we just um, are, are, are expecting great things. Through this whole month of November, we have been... Uh, focusing on a, a series called Grateful for the Gifts. And, and just living in the gratitude that we have for what God is doing to us and through us, right? That, 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 he's, um, th- that he's provided all kinds of ways for us to, to experience Him and to be a, a delivery system for what He knows we need and what he wants um, for us to experience. And so I'm going to I'm going to wrap that up today. And and we're actually going to go back to a, a scripture that we started out with at the very beginning. And um, and, and I'm going to and I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of very specific gifts of the spirit that I think are, are important to us. And, and so we're going to we're going to do that today. I want to talk to you about this real life in the gifts. Because the truth is, if we don't make the gifts real in our lives, if they don't become an everyday, everyday occurrence or, or a, a, um, a normal way of life as they were in Jesus' life, and listen, I've, you know, I've tried to reiterate this point. Jesus lived as an example for us to see what the normal Christian life looked like. So Jesus didn't live this anomaly life that no one else could attain. He lived the life that He meant for us to live. That He was demonstrating, that He was giving us an example of what it looks like when a follower of His, when a believer walks uh, in, in the gifts of the Spirit through the empowerment of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit that was in Him is the same Holy Spirit that is in us. And when we understand that, and we recognize that, that it was Jesus putting that into place and and demonstrating that for us over a three-year period of just living normal life, right? (laughs) Living out life. And then as as He neared the end of that life, He said, and listen, here's here's the good news. You're going to do even greater things than these, than what I've done, because I'm going to be with you. I'm going to, the Holy Spirit is coming to be in you. And it's, and it's through that empowerment that you're going to experience even more than what I've demonstrated because what I've demonstrated for you is, is, is just enough to get you started. It's, a, it's enough to show you uh, that all things are possible with God. And, and, and this is the faith that I want you to live into. And, and so... When we live into that faith, when we live into that calling, that way of life, it's going to require that we let go of some old things. It's going to require that we release some old thinking and some old ways of operating, some limited ways of operating, some short-sighted ways of operating, dare I say, some safe ways of operating. Because here's what I know. Operating in the gifts of the Spirit is a dangerous way to live. It's dangerous to the enemy. It's dangerous to your ego because it will destroy your ego. Right? Because you've got to get rid of that ego so that you can get out of the way and let God have His way. And, and so it, it, can be, it can be dangerous when you say, I, I believe this, although I can't see this. Right? And you're stepping into, by faith, something that you cannot see though God has said it and that settles it. Right? God said it. That settles it. We believe it. That's what faith looks like. Right? I, I, we used to get that, I used to get that mixed up. I used to say, God said it, so... I believe it, and that settles it. Well, the truth is, it really doesn't have anything to do with whether I believe it or not. If God has said it, it's a done. It's done, right? That settles it. 
so I believe it. And, and it's in that belief of what God has said, it's in that faith that I put in Him, that trust that I put in Him, that confidence that I put in Him. Faith is now the confidence of things not seen, right? The substance of things hoped for, the confidence of things not seen. It's the, it, it's, it's the solid foundation of the things that we now get to have when we place our faith and hope in Christ. So when, when, we, when we look at the gifts, when we begin to operate in the gifts of the Spirit that God has given to us, that God has, is wanting to flow through us, and I believe that we are in the middle uh, right now. I don't, I don't know in the middle, but I believe it's already started and we're somewhere in, in the process of a revival that God is pouring out His Spirit once again He's always been pouring out His Spirit, right? It, we're, we're, it, it's a, it's, it's a Joel, uh, you know, the, the Joel revival that was prophesied in the book of Acts that the, that the Apostle Peter, you know, went back and he said, old men will dream dreams, young men will see, see visions, or maybe it was the other way around. I don't care. Well, you think you're older, not old, it's all relative, right? I used to think people my age were like ancient old. Now I'm like, yeah, that's not too bad. You know, you're just, it's not that old. It's really, you know. But anyway, you, you know what I'm saying. So it, he said, and I will pour out my spirit on all people, sons and daughters, all, all, all people. And, and when God pours out his spirit, listen, here's the thing about God's spirit. He doesn't just pour out his spirit so we get wet. Right? So that, so that we get covered in the Spirit. That's not the point. The, the, pouring, the point of pouring out the Spirit is that it, will, that it will do something. That it will accomplish what it was released for. And, and so here's my point that I want to get to today. Is that the gifts of the Spirit flow to, with, and through you every day if you stay connected. If you stay connected, the, the gifts of the Spirit will flow to, with, and and through you, right? Because the Spirit is not released just to make us feel better about ourselves or to make us feel religious or to make us, you know, any. the Spirit is released so that we will have something to deliver to the world. So that we, by the delivery system of God, we can release what God is releasing from heaven. And we get to do that. We get to play a part in that. We get to experience that to us, with us, and through us. And it's in that, it's in that way that we experience the fullness of God's presence around us. Right? The, the, why would we want to quench that? Why would we want to shut that down? Why would we want to neglect that in our lives? I, I, unfortunately, I grew up uh, for a long time uh, taught, taught in, a, in, in a tradition that all of that had stopped and there was none of that still going on. And, and, and you know, we have the Bible, just read your Bible and be a good little Christian, hunker down and wait for Jesus to come back. Don't expect anything from Him. Don't expect Him to intervene in anything that you're doing. Don't, don't expect Him to show up and make a difference in your life. Right? I was literally taught this. And then I read my Bible and it's just like, no, that's not what... It, we don't have the Scriptures just so we can see what God did then. We have the Scriptures to tell us what God wants to do now. And what he's up to now, what he's what he's uh, uh, bringing to life now into our lives, so that we can spread life around us. And, and so, I, I want to just show you First Corinthians twelve has been the passage that we've kind of I don't know kind of centered on uh, through this through the series, and I'm just going to read it to you. It says, now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. And one of the series, one of the sermons in the series was that it's for the common good. It's not what you bring to the table is not for you. It's for the people around you. And what the people around you bring to the table is not for them. It's for you. (laughs) And, And as we all bring what God is pouring to us, with us and through us, then then 
everybody receives what they are in need of. Everybody, God is able to deliver all that He has for us. And so, it's for the common good. To one there is given, through the Spirit, a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge. To, uh, by, the, by, the, by means of that same Spirit. To another, faith. By that same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing. By that, same, by that one Spirit. You, you seeing a theme here? By that same Spirit. By that one Spirit. By the Spirit of God. Right? What, what's he trying to drive home? What he's trying to drive home is that these things are not from us. What he's trying to drive home is that these things are not possessed by us. They are possessed by the Holy Spirit, but we are possessed by the Holy Spirit. You, did you get that? That was a little pun type of thing going on there. Didn't plan that. Anyway, to another, miraculous powers, to another, prophecy, to another, distinguishing between spirits, to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues, to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He dis distributes them to each one just as He determines. Now, here's the thing that I, that I think we have to take away from this. Is that God is saying, I'm going to pour out all these things that make people feel very uncomfortable. That, that, are, that are very strange looking in this world. That, that, are, that require miraculous uh, you know, the things that we would chalk up as being miraculous or otherworldly or you know, whatever it might be. But I want you to understand the source of where they come from. They all come from the Holy Spirit. So here's the first question. Do we believe in the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Do we believe that God is revealing Himself to us and manifesting Himself to us in the person of the Holy Spirit? And if so, then how does, what does that look like? And what that looks like here in this passage are nine spiritual gifts that, that um, really kind of set a foundation for other spiritual gifts to operate. But we can, we can look at them and, and, and we can put them into categories. These nine that are listed here in this one small passage are put into categories. And if we simply operate in these, we will be able to accomplish things that, that, that we could never have even fathomed or imagined because God can work through them to demonstrate His power, to demonstrate His presence, to show people that He is alive and well. And listen, in the book of Acts, the, the, the evangelistic strategy in the book of Acts was not let's go, let's go print some tiny little tracts with, with some tiny little font on it and go leave them in bathroom stalls around the county, right? I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to cut anything down, but that wasn't the evangelistic strategy. It wasn't go stand on a street corner with a, with a picket sign and, you know, write it written in King James Version. I don't know why they have to do it in King James Version. I, I, don't, I don't want to sound judgy, right? I don't want to sound judgmental. I don't want to sound angry. People say I, think I sound angry. I'm not angry. I'm passionate about the fact that God has given us, demonstrated for us, lived out, and shown us what the evangelistic strategy of the Scripture is. What is the evangelistic strategy of the Scripture? Is to demonstrate God's power to us, with us, and through us as we stay connected to Him and just obey whatever it is that He tells us to do, right? You can go try to talk somebody into believing in Jesus, or you can go and pray for that person to be healed, set free, delivered, and when God shows up and does what they could not do by themselves, you don't have to try to talk them into the fact that there's a God and that He cares about them and that He loves them, right? I mean, I'm all about education. I'm all about share, you know, sharing information. That's what I do. But ultimately, if all of our information is not backed up by power, right? <laughs> the Apostle Paul said it best. He said, I didn't come to you with eloquent words and speech to try to talk you into this, what I came to you with was the power demonstrated. That was the strategy. It was the power of God demonstrated to us, with us, and through us. 
When people look at your life and they say, why aren't you freaking out when everybody else is freaking out? Why do you still have peace when the world is burning up? When when the world is falling apart and you still live in peace and and you're not losing it? Why is it that that your family is is holding together when everybody else's family seems to be exploding and and falling apart? Why is it that you uh, walk in this power? Listen, that's the moment that... here's, Here's the way I love to say it. Live a questionable life, right? In other words, live a life that is worthy of questions like, so so what is wrong with you? Like, what is different about you? There's something weird about you that I just, you know, I don't understand what, you know. The Scripture says, be prepared in season and out of season to give an account for your hope do you know what that passage assumes it assumes that we christians are going to live in a state of hope that that we're going to exude hope around us that that we're going to walk into places in faith with hope and believe that god is going to show up and do something that's what hope is that's what hope looks like right That, that we're not hopeless that we're not just victims, that we're not just you know, here at the, at, the, at the whim of whatever powers of this world is coming against us. Absolutely not. We serve the One who is greater than He that is in the world, right? The power that is in me is greater than He is that is in the world. And, the, and that's the Holy Spirit. He is the key, keeper and the giver of the gifts. And it's the gifts that we need to release into the world. So the way we do this, here's the first category, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. I'm going to pick out two of them, and we're going to drill down a little bit. But So the revelation gifts listed in this passage are the words of wisdom, the words of knowledge, and the discernment of spirits. The words of wisdom is basically information that comes from God that He speaks to you into your spirit that you can use and that you can that you can bring out and release into a person's life that brings wisdom into their life to release them from something that has held you back. I, when I do marriage counseling or any kind of counseling at all, I, I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a great counselor. I'm not a. I'm not a counselor, right? I'm, I'm more of a coach and a preacher, right? That's, that, that's so I, I come at it with a little more aggression than a counselor. You know, I'm not the, oh, well, how does that make you feel? No, I, I'm not that guy. But, you know, because when you're telling me a problem, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. If you ever come talk to me, you're just going to know what's, going to, what's happening. As you're telling me what the situation is or what the problem is or what the concern is or whatever it is, I am listening to you, right? I'm listening to you. But I am also listening to God for wisdom. I'm listening to Him. Because the truth is, I probably can't do anything for you in your problem. Uh, Like, yeah, you know, as I get older, I have more experience, you know, and and I've, I've screwed it up, so maybe I can tell you how to you know, live on beyond it or something like that. But, but ultimately, it's not about what I can give you. Right? Here, here's something I came to terms with a long time ago. When people come to meet, we, meet with me, it's not me they want to meet with. It's who I represent. It's who I represent to the world if I will surrender my will to His will, surrender my thoughts to His thoughts, and if I will just simply receive and connect to heaven on their behalf as they're telling me what their problem is, God is giving me the word of wisdom to give them their answer. What the answer to their problem is. What what the fix is for their situation. When this is really funny is when the fix has nothing to do with the problem. That's when it gets really strange. You know, and you start, you know, somebody's telling you all about this situation that they've got, and then you come out of left field with something completely disconnected, or at least it seems disconnected. And Jesus did this all the time, right? Read the Gospels. Jesus almost never answered the question that he was actually being asked. He just didn't, because he knew that's not the problem. 
And he operated under a word of wisdom from the Father, knowing all things. He is omniscient, right? He, he knows everything. And, and so he knows what you need before you even ask for it. And if I can stay connected to Him, you can stay connected to Him. You become a heavenly resource, a divine resource to the people around you because of who you are connected to. A word of knowledge. A word of knowledge is simply information that God wants to make you aware of, that God wants to bring into your life of what He's doing around you. And when you begin to speak a word of knowledge, when, 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 you, when you begin to hear the voice of God in your life and, and, it, and, he, and He begins to say something, He begins to say something that maybe doesn't even make sense to you, but because you know where it's coming from, you're willing to release it. You're, re- you're willing to say it uh, out loud and, and let it flow to and through you. And what it does is it goes out and it causes things to happen. Words create worlds, right? That's what the sermon was last week. The words that we say create the worlds that we live in. And when we operate in faith and operate in words of wisdom and words of knowledge that God is speaking to us and through us, we are creating the worlds around us with God's words. Right? That's what words of knowledge, words of wisdom are. God's words that we are releasing through us if we're willing to, if we're willing to trust and obey, if we're willing to step out of our comfort zone and be, and you know, sometimes it comes across as, well, I have a feeling. You know, I mean, the, 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 the catchphrase right now in our culture is, I feel like blah, blah, blah. Right? It's not I think blah, blah, blah. It's, I feel like, blah, blah, blah. Why do we say that? Why do we say, I feel like, right? I, I think that's divine. I think that is, that is evidence of what God is doing in us. Because God bypasses our brain where we're going to process the life out of whatever He says. And He comes straight to the heart. And in the heart is where you feel it from. And so you feel a word before you think the word. Yep. The discernment of spirits. Discernment of spirits is not about demonology. It's not about identifying, oh, you have a demon. You know, you're a demon. I don't think that's at all what it is. I think what discernment of spirit is, is what spirit are you carrying with you? What spirit has, has affected you as a person and and what is the true spirit of who you are right i've seen people i've I've literally experienced this what i believe is this spiritual gift when i first meet a person i've I've done this several times um i've I've met and and it's funny because the, the few instances that i can think of it was adult children of people that i knew well to be believers but their children weren't really following Christ. But when I met their child, when I met their son or daughter, the moment that I met them, I saw their spirit. I saw the spirit in them, and and immediately I felt a peace that this person is on their journey toward God. <laughs> this person is coming to the Lord, right? And and in every one of those instances where I saw that, I ended up. Leading, and leading those people to Christ and baptizing them. I could give you names, I won't, but to protect the innocent or guilty or whatever they are. Right. But that is a discernment. When you walk into a room and you see, a, you know, you, you walk into the presence of someone, you're like, ooh, something weird happening there, right? It's, it's like, I just got a weird vibe from that person, or I just got this weird, you know. That's a discernment of spirit. That's God trying to protect you or trying to lead you, trying to guide you in the way that you are to respond in this situation. Because, listen, if we will stay abiding in Him, in other words, if we will stay connected 
to Him, then He will give us all the information that we need to operate and to move and to act on His behalf here in this place in peace. In peace. Listen, here's the opposite of that. If I have no information, I have no understanding, I have no wisdom, I have no discernment, what am I going to live in? Terror. Right? I'm going to be like, I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. I, I don't know what's happening here. And, but listen, if I know that God is giving me wisdom and knowledge and discernment and revealing those things to me, now I'm seeing what others can't see. I'm operating in a different level in a, on a different frequency than the rest of the world operates. I'm no longer just operating on this level of reaction from the outside in, whatever's happening to me is causing me to think and feel the way I do. And it's, and it, and it's shutting down my spirit and my connection with God. And I just begin to live in this fear, fight, or flight syndrome all the time where I'm just simply reacting to everybody. And, and I look a lot like a squirrel out in the backyard. Right? Amen? Anybody ever feel like a squirrel out in the backyard? You're just like, where's that? There's a dog over there. Right? Does your brain ever feel that way? Mine does. Mine does. And, and what it's become for me is a warning system, an alert system to say, check your connection. Check your connection. Because the moment that I lose connection, the moment, the moment that I take my eyes off of Christ, the, the moment that I, start, that I stop living in the awareness of God, then that's the moment that I begin to live from the outside in rather than from the inside out. You see, when I'm connected to God in my spirit, in the inner core of who I am, in the part of me that is created in the image of God, and I'm connected to Him, and that's where my source is coming from, now that is flowing out through my soul, which is where my thoughts and emotions live. And so my thoughts and emotions are being guided and directed by God, not by the world around me. And so I am living in peace and love and joy and all of those fruit of the Spirit that's being produced in my spirit out through my soul are manifesting out in my flesh. right? And I am bringing into the world what is in my heart and releasing what is in my heart, my spirit, through my soul, manifest in my flesh. And people say, why, are you, why do you have so much peace when everybody's freaking out? Why are you so full of joy when everybody else is so angry and upset? Why, why don't you hold bitterness and unforgiveness and resentment against that person that called you those names and did you that way and, and all that, and you just you forgive them and you let them go? See, that's just the Spirit flowing. Because that's the power that we get to move and operate in when we walk in step with the Spirit. When we stay in tune with Him. The, the, the next three uh, is the, are the, the speech gifts. The prophecy, the gift of tongues, and the interpretations of tongues. Prophecy is, is simply a way that we bring to the world. The Apostle Paul actually talks about these two gifts in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, two chapters over from where we, we are here. Uh, he, he says it this way, but... But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. You say, well, I'm not a prophet. Well, have you ever spoke to someone on God's behalf because God has filled you up with something and you've taken courage and comfort from what God has done in you and you're allowing it to pour through you and you're coming alongside of a person and you're bringing them comfort and strengthening and courage. That's called prophecy. That's called letting the Word of God and letting the power of God's strength and comfort and encouragement flow to you, with you, and through you to another person. You see, sometimes we make this stuff so religious that, it, we, we, that it's no earthly good. When in fact, God said, no, no, this is just a normal day. This, this, is, just, this is just how I move. This is how I operate in your life. So when we, when we move in these things, when we understand 
these things. Now, I'm not going to get deep into uh, the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. People get freaked out about that. Don't be freaked out about that. Right? There's, there's, there's so many different ways to understand that. In, in, the, in the book of Acts, they spoke languages that they did not know, but other people around them knew. There are testimonies of missionaries around the world that have done that exact same thing because God takes the, the vibrations that are coming out of your mouth and rearranges them to be understood by the people that are receiving them because He wants to get a message across. There are also... The gift of tongues that I believe the Apostle Paul talks about, especially here, is that this is a language that is between you and God. And, and that language is going to manifest in different ways. And, and, it, and it, sometimes it will sound like, feel like something that is, is something you understand, and sometimes it won't. And sometimes it will come out verbally and sometimes it won't. But it will be that connection between you and God. We're we're in Romans uh, chapter 8 where it says that even when you don't even know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that is in you, the Spirit that you are possessed by is praying for you on your behalf. He doesn't need what's in your brain. He's got what's in your heart. And when we begin to pray from the heart, and we begin to to verbalize or vocalize that in some ways, that can sometimes come out in ways that we don't understand. And but we don't have to be freaked out about that or scared about that, right? We've used this gift of God that is obviously in the Bible several places to divide the church. And and here's one thing I do know that the that, that God doesn't give any of the gifts. For the, for the purpose of dividing the church. So the whole idea that we use the gift of the Spirit to divide the church is not of God. It is of the enemy. Amen? Don't be afraid of what you don't fully comprehend yet. Right? I mean, do you really understand what it is that makes your refrigerator cold on the inside? One person does. The rest of us, we just take it by faith that when we open that door, it's going to be 39 degrees in there, right? That's, that's, that's all. I don't need to understand all the rest of why that's working in there. I'm still going to use it. I'm still going to operate in it. I'm not going to let it divide me. And, and you know, well, because you're not a stove and you're a refrigerator, I'm going to... Anyway, all right, let's move on. Power gifts. The power gifts are the gift of faith, the gift of healing, and the working of miracles. Now, the two that I want to focus on are here. The first one is the gift of faith. Because I think we don't understand fully the gift of faith. The key, uh, the, the key to the power gifts is the spirit of faith. Everything, faith is the frequency. Listen. God, God gave me this just recently in, in these words. I've understood this principle a long time, but, but He gave this to me in, in these words in a very specific way, I believe, and, and I wrote them down. Faith is the frequency with which we connect to heaven. In other words, if you have a radio receiver, like in, out in your car, you have a radio, and on your radio there's a dial, or there's a push button, there's a digital thing, and what you do is, is you change that frequency when you change those little numbers, you know, 101.7, 101.8, 101.9, right? You're changing the frequency. There is, a, there is another frequency that is in the air already. This room is full of them. This whole place, this whole planet is full of those frequencies out there. And, but we can't see them. But when we take a receiver and we dial it in to the right frequency, what it's doing is it's sending out a frequency that is connecting with the matching frequency. Are you, are you, are you with me? Okay, so if 105.2 is the one that you're, that you're looking for, when you turn your receiver to 105.2, it reaches out there into the universe and finds 105.2 radio frequency and connects to it, comes into tune with it, and now it manifests through your speakers and you can listen to your music. All this is, is an earthly example of a heavenly truth. Of a kingdom truth. And listen, 
the frequency with which we tune into heaven is called faith. It is faith. Jesus said it over and over again. Faith has healed you. Faith has delivered you. Faith has set you free. Faith has made you well. Why? What, what's He saying? When you tuned into faith, right? You tuned away from doubt and fear, right? You didn't tune into to 97 point doubt, you know, 107 point fear, and I'm afraid. 102, I don't believe, right? You, you, you tuned into 777 faith. There is no 777. Anyway. When we tune into faith, when our faith comes into resonance, into a resonant frequency with what God is already sending from heaven. Here's the thing. Here's why Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is in you, is with you. What does He mean? What He's saying is that the answer to your question, the answer to your problem, the answer to your prayer is already here. All you have to do is tune into it. All you have to do is come into frequency with it. And the way that we do that is by faith. Now, here's even better news. That faith is not by you trying harder to believe. That faith is by you surrendering your will to God's will and receiving the gift of faith that He's pouring out on you. That's what the gift of faith is. The gift of faith is given by grace just like everything else that God gives. So this whole idea of, well, you don't, you're not getting your healing because you're not believing hard enough. Because you're not, you're not trying hard to try. Listen, if you're, if you're trying, if you're working uh, into it, and, and your contribution is, is what you're depending on, that's exactly what is blocking you from it. Because the truth is, the only way you can receive a gift is to receive it. If it's not free... If it's not granted by grace, then it ceases to be a gift. If you think you can earn it and work for it and deserve it, then it's no longer a gift. It's a wage. Right? So when you need more belief, when you need more faith for this, the miracle that you believe God has called you to believe for and, and the desire that He's put into your heart, here's the thing. God gives you both the desire and the faith. Right? Yeah. <laughs> He gives us the desires of our heart. And then He gives us the gift of faith. He gives you the desire so that you will seek after the faith. Now, how do you seek after the faith? Okay, in the, here's the way you can always tell how to do something in the kingdom. Just do the opposite of whatever you would do in the world. That's all. So if you would seek after it in the world by trying to dig holes in the ground and break down walls and study enough, you know, and then do enough and, and earn enough and work hard enough and all. Okay, just stop all that and do the opposite. Do the other thing. What's the other thing? The other thing is surrender. <laughs> I surrender. Now the way that's manifested in my life that I've talked about, you know, several times is this. This is what my surrender looks like because I have a little different personality. But here's what surrender looks like in my life. Fine, God, you do it. Right? I know that sounds sacrilegious and disrespectful. God's big enough not to get offended by my piddly little responses, right? Because every time, every time that I've come to God at the end of my rope, at the end of everything I thought I could do to make it happen and earn it and deserve it and work for it and all that, and then I'll get to the end of my rope and I'm like, Fine, God. I can't do it. You do it. He's like, finally? I've been waiting for you to do that. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to get out of the way. I've been, I've been waiting for you to let me do what only I can do. Here you go. Whoosh. The floodgates of heaven open. And what I could not work for, earn, or deserve, or manipulate, He makes flow freely without effort. You see, God, God never had any intention for us to make it happen on our own. It's in our state of surrender that we find our victory. 
It's Him in our state of, rel- of, of letting go and, and allowing Him to flow into us all that He has for us that we ultimately experience the power. And so many times we've worked into this, I- we've worked this idea of a works into it. Of, well, if I'll just study more, if I'll just pray a little more, if I'll just sacrifice a little more, if I'll just do this a little more, if I'll just... Listen, all those things are fine, but they are responses. Amen? You understand what I'm saying? They are responses, not reasons why. When God pours into me and releases His grace on me and, gives, and, and, and uses me in His gifts, and, and all those things through that surrender, it just makes me want to do more. It makes me want to work more. It makes me want to serve more. It makes me want to study more, to pray more, to worship more. But listen, I'm not doing all of those more so He will have to give me something. I'm doing all of that as a response to what He has already given me. God initiates everything. You never initiate anything. If you think you have to initiate so that God will then reciprocate, you have got the cart before the horse. You love because He first loved you. I don't love God to make Him do something for me. I love God because He first loved me. All I'm doing is taking the love He poured into me and just giving it back to Him. I'm just responding. His grace that's poured out on me was initiated by Him. The key to the power gifts is the spirit of faith. God gives power gifts God gives power gifts of the Spirit because He wants to bless. He wants to bless. He wants to bless you and He wants to bless the people around you. And the way that He's going to do that is He's going to pour the spiritual gifts to you, with you, and through you. And it's, and it's in that that He gets to bless the people around you and we get to be a part of what He's doing. So the gift of faith is the, is, is the unshakable conviction given by God that He is going to act uh, supernaturally in a particular situation. In other words, God said it. That settled it. I believe it. Right? It's no longer I'm asking, begging. You know, No, our true faith is based on, relig- uh, is based on re- revelation. It's based on what God has said. And, and when we stay in communication with God and we have the mind of Christ and we stay in step with the Spirit and we're continuously communicating, right? This is what uh, Paul says in Thessalonians. Pray continuously. That word pray continuously doesn't mean working and prevailing in you know, sacrificial prayer. All it really means is stay connected to God. Just be aware of His presence all the time. In all my ways I acknowledge You and You will make my path straight. It's the, it's the continual acknowledgement of God. And it's through that that God speaks to us and then we stand on, that, on, on what He has said. In Mark 11.22, it says, have the faith, have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go and throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he that but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. That that first phrase, have faith in God, could be translated from the Greek and probably, I believe, should be translated from the Greek, have the faith of God. Have the faith of God. What does that mean? That means that's what God has said. I can't see it. That's what makes it faith. But if I have the revelation, I have the faith of God. I know what God has said and that settled it. That's what it is. And I believe it. I trust it. I stand on it. And, and it's, and it's that, there that I get to operate in that, in that gift of faith. The gift of healing is very similar 
in that all we're really doing is connecting the circumstances on this earth with the reality of what is already done in heaven. The gift of healing is a supernatural action of bringing, uh, to, to bring a sick person to physical, emotional, and spiritual health. That's what the gift of healing does. It just restores God's original plan. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the, those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received, so freely give. That's how we operate in the gift of healing. Is we just step into what God has already given to us, we let it flow through us, and we restore all that the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus came to give us life and give it to us abundantly and restore all of those things back to God's plan. That's what healing looks like. Amen? Are you with me? Why don't you stand up? We, we sang the song, The Waymaker. That you are a waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You see, when we know who He is, and we know who we are because of who He is, then our identity changes. Our identity moves from being a, an innocent bystander to being the delivery system of the divine. <laughs> the Apostle Paul in, in 2 Corinthians says, our weapons are not like the world's weapons. Our weapons have divine power to break down strongholds. And then he talks about two very specific things. Prayer and thoughts. As if those are weapons that are used against the enemy. <laughs> Here's what I think is awesome about that. Is that those are the only two weapons that we need to use against the enemy. Because that's where all of what God flows to us and through us flow. It flows through our thoughts. It flows through our prayer, connection to Him. And then we release it with the words that we say into the world. And that's exactly how Jesus shut Him down when He was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. The only thing Jesus used as a weapon against the enemy was this. Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Here's what the Word of God says. And just like light, just like darkness can't put up a fight against light, lies cannot put up a fight against the truth. And when we speak the truth, then the lies have to leave. When we shine the light, the darkness has to leave. So let's pray together. Father, we just thank You for all that You want to do to us, with us, and through us. Through these gifts that You've promised and, and that You've delivered and that You continuously deliver. Give us that gift of faith, Lord, to believe and to trust and to know that You are alive and well around us and in us and through us all the time. Help us to live into the life that You've called us to that, that has divine power to break down the strongholds of the enemy and not to be the victims, but to be the victors. To be more than conquerors through Christ our Lord. And so Lord, I, I pray that we would just walk from this place with a new sense of freedom and a, and a new sense of power as we submit and surrender our will to Your will. And as You restore all things, We give it all to You. We praise Your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. Remember, we will not meet for the gathering this week. We will have CR on, on Friday, though. Um, but um, have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy yourself. <laughs>